good morning students in our last session we have discussed uh, the right to scanning electron microscope what is a uh, difference what are the advantages which are related to scanning electron microscope over to the simple uh, optical microscope we have discussed in our in our last session so in uh, today's session we will discuss about the transmission electron microscope so why we use transmission electron microscope and where exactly we use these this electron transmission electron microscope so transmission electron microscope which is also called it as stem stem analysis we call it as stem analysis scanning electron microscope we call it as a stem analysis so transmission electron microscope which is uh, the name itself which indicates transmission of electrons through the sample which gives us the analysis so transmission of electrons towards the sample which transmits towards the sample the elect the electrons which transmit over the sample that is the electrons which passes through the sample when the electrons or the beam of uh, electrons which passes through the sample which gives us the analysis or the result here so that is what the name which it indicates so the transmission elect uh, the transmission electron microscope which is uh, of very very importance when we consider with respect to the uh, other microscope here so because in a stem analysis we can have a analysis of a sample which is less than 0.2 nanometer wavelength so because of that we are we use uh, this uh, transmission electron microscope uh, in this analysis and the sample which is having of a thickness uh, that is uh, the thickness of this material when we take an um, thickness the thickness is very very less so the thicker material uh, will be analyzed by using stem analysis so in some analysis that is scanning electron microscope we go only for the analysis with respect to the surface of the material composition of material that is the material the electron beam will not pass or which will not pass through the sample there so here the electron beam which passes towards the sample and it passes over the sample that is the beam will pass over the sample here that is what we are having because of this the sample which is of uh, less than 100 nanometer so when we see uh, the ultra microtone ultra microtone that is uh, when we are having a less material less the thick materials so the it, uh, the thin material the thin materials can be analyzed by using this uh, transmission electron microscope here so uh, we we can see here what all the parts which consist of this one so it consist of the tungsten filament from where the electrons are being emitted the uh, emitted electrons which passes throughs the magnetic lenses electromagnetic lenses which passes throughs the specimen it is the specimen what we are having and again it passes throughs the projection lens and imaging plate here so after this imaging we see the images in the system imaging system here so the first what we are having the electron source electron source is nothing but from where the electrons are being generated because here we are having uh, uh, the tungsten filament uh, by due to the high voltage of around uh, uh, that is uh, 300 uh, that is uh, around uh, 300 uh, kilowatt that is uh, more than 300 kilowatt uh, voltage will be uh, used for this for the emission of the electrons here so high voltage uh, we are going to use here that is more than more than for example more than sorry more than uh, 20 kilowatt that is more than 20 kilowatt uh, source is used here so uh, when we are having 20 kilo is nothing but 20000 20000 kilowatt 
uh, of uh, uh, the electron the source is used for the emitting of electrons here so due to the thermonic uh, uh, emission of the electrons takes place and the electrons which are being generated uh, by this uh, gun electron gun or the filament uh, the electrons will generated electrons will pass us through the sample here so that is the electron source and electromagnetic lenses the electrons which are produced uh, which will be sent towards the sample by this electromagnetic lenses so uh, the electromagnetic lenses makes this electrons to hit towards the sample here so that is what we are having the electromagnetic uh, lenses and the sample holder and the imaging system imaging sense system is nothing but after the electrons which hits towards the sample and passes towards the sample the past um, uh, electron beams will be you know, detected by this uh, detectors and the image is formed on the imaging plate here that is what we are having in the transmission electron microscope so when we see the electrons which are been emitted here so when the when it passes through the sample uh, we are going to see the back scattered electrons the argon electrons uh, the x ray uh, uh, electrons which are been uh, uh, which are been formed here in the same way we are going to see the uh, that is elastically scattered one uh, unelastic uh, that is unscattered electron beam as well as inelastically scattered electrons so that is what we are, we are going to see the different types of the electrons which are being emitted here uh, to give us the analysis of the sample here also that is what we are having the uh, elastically uh, scattered one uh, elast uh, elastically scattered and inelastically scattered electrons uh, which are being generated here uh, and the unscattered electron beam also which are being generated to give us the analysis here so uh, in we go in detail of this one so before going for the analysis we have to prepare the sample uh, so uh, before going to this i have to have some uh, history before this one so that is uh, the tem analysis uh, the tem uh, that is the transmission electron microscope uh, uh, which is been uh, uh, find out by the uh, the scientist called as uh, the uh, max Max Wall and uh, Ernest uh, Rusker. Uh, by these persons, the transmission electron microscope has been uh, uh, has been uh, find out. As well as in uh, 1986, in the 1986, uh, for this uh, they have got the Nobel Prize. As well as in 2017, again Creo uh, EM. That is also one of the electron microscope which has been uh, uh, which has been uh, find out uh, so for this also they have got the Nobel Prize in 2017 for another person uh, which has been uh, which has been given the Nobel Prize for this also so as well as uh, uh, these uh, transmission electron microscope uh, where we are having the uh, more than 20 kilowatt of the uh, the source which is used for the uh, generation of the electrons uh, uh, by the thermonic uh, by using the cathode, uh, by the this this was the uh, history what we are having, uh, and uh, which is having uh, uh, the one lakh times shorter the wavelength uh, when we compare with the visible light. So when we compare with the visible light, which is having one lakh times shorter the wavelength. Uh, uh, when we compare with the visible light uh, and as well as magnification when we see the magnification it is having more than uh, 10 lakhs times the magnification uh, when we compare with the uh, different uh, uh, microscopes uh, this one so in uh, 1926 uh, uh, the electromagnetic lenses has been found by using uh, Hans Busk uh, by use uh, this person has uh, come up with uh, these electromagnetic lenses in 1926 itself so that is what we are having so high voltage electron beams are being generated due to the 20 kilowatts of uh, voltage which is used here so high voltage electron beams are being generated so this is what we are having so we we discuss in detail about this uh, transmission electron microscope so transmission electron microscope uh, which is a microscopy technique in which a uh, beam of electrons the beam of electrons which is being passed transmitted through an ultra thin specimen so ultra thin specimen it is so the thickness of the specimen should be very very less that is the electron should pass uh, pass uh, 
through the sample through this sample it should not deflect the electron should not deflect the electron should pass through the sample that is what we are having so because of this we make ultra thin sample so if the sample is having more thick then the electrons will not pass through the sample so it deflects the electrons will deflect okay so the atoms the atoms which are present in the sample should be of smaller in size if we are having a bigger in size and if it, it is having a, the atom which is having more energy then electrons will not pass through the sample so the electrons will deflect to deflect there only so because of that the the atom size should be smaller the energy contained by the sam uh, by the atom of for the sample should be less so that the electrons will pass uh, through the sample to give us the analysis here so because of that we make ultra thin specimens here so uh, the term is based on transmission electron which is having very high resolution as well as high magnification which is having so in 1986 by rusk uh, that is by the rusker that is the uh, the scientist which have come up with this uh, uh, term analysis that is the term uh, the device which have been uh, uh, come up with so for this uh, he has got Nobel prize in physics uh, uh, for the development of this uh, term so before going to the uh, working principle we should know the sample preparation so how exactly the sample will be prepared for the analysis of the time here so the sample which have been uh, prepared that is uh, the fixation first method is the fixation so fixation is uh, nothing but uh, fixed with the chemical products so we are going to have a chemical treatment uh, for the sample and then we go for uh, rinsing and staining so that is nothing but treating with the uh, heavy metal compounds uh, it is been treated with the uh, heavy metal like tungsten material uh, so it is been treated with the uh, heavy metal uh, compo compounds uh, that is nothing but rinsing uh, rinsing and strain so dehydration will be done dehydration will be done with the organic solvent like uh, acetone or it may be the ethanol by using this we are going to have a dehydration for that one and uh, uh, the embedded in resin that is material is gradually infiltrated with the uh, unpolar uh, unpolarized resins we are going to have a uh, embedded in this resin that is material is gradually infiltrated with the still unpolymerized uh, resin material next trimming of the resin will be done um, that is block and ultra thin section that is collection of section on grids uh, so uh, trimming of uh, resin block as well as ultra thin section uh, will be done and collection of the section on the grid so the sample should be of a thin sample that is less than uh, the 50 nanometer so the material should be less than 50 nanometer uh, so that we get a detailed image uh, that is uh, of one nanometer in size so we are going to have a, a one nanometer in size should we have a detailed image we are going to get so this is what we are having the sample preparation that is fixation rinsing and staining dehydration uh, embedding in uh, resin trimming the resin so this is the sample preparation what we have to do before going for the sample analysis so uh, after the sample analysis we go for the analysis so what is the principle with respect to that so the term which uses high energy that is electrons that is uh, up to 300 kilowatt accelerating voltage which is used uh, so accelerated to nearly the speed of light so more than the speed of light that is one lakh times uh, the shorter the wavelength it is having so because of that it accelerates uh, with the speed of light so the electron behave uh, the electron beams uh, which have been produced which behaves like a wave front with a wavelength uh, about uh, one million times that is one million times the shorter than uh, light waves so it is having uh, one lakh times uh, that is uh, the uh, one lakh times or one million times the uh, shorter uh, the wave, uh, wave uh, that is the wavelength so what it is having that when we compare with the light waves so when electron beam passes through a thin section specimen of a material electrons are being scattered so when it passes through uh, pass uh, uh, through the sample thin uh, section of the sample 
the of a sp uh, specimen of the material the electrons will be scattered so a sophisticated system of electromagnetic lenses so we are having a magnetic that is electromagnetic lenses as well as the projection lenses which are been made by using electron that is electromagnetic lenses so a sophisticated system of this electromagnetic lenses focus the scattered electrons into an image or a diffraction pattern or an non analytical spectrum here so when you, when it uh, deflects it it uh, we are going to get uh, non analytical spectrums we are going to get here so the imaging mode that provides a highly magnification the imaging mode what we get will be having a highly magnified view of uh, the microoid nanostructure we are going to see here so nano analytical modes represents what do mean by this nano analytical modes which represents elements are present in a tiny volume of material so the nano electric uh, the analytical it is nothing but the elements the elements or the atoms which are present or the elements which are present in a tiny volume so we are having a thin section here ultra thin section we are having in that what is the elements which are present in that volume of a material will be analyzed in the non analytical modes here so this term uh, analysis that is the term that is a transmission electron microscope which uh, works based on de broglie equation so de broglie equation we are having so lambda is equals to h by square root of 2 m not e into bracket 1 plus e by 2 m not c square so this we call it as de broglie's equation so where h is nothing but a planck's constant m not is nothing but the mass of electrons that is the rest mass of electrons and c is the speed of light here so based on this de broglie this equation uh, the transmission electron microscope works here so that is what we are having with respect to transmission electron microscope here so the when we see the magnification which is having the more than uh, the uh, 10 lakhs times the magnification we are going to have so what is the working how exactly this transmission electron microscope works here so we are having the tungsten filament so which generates a beam of electrons that is then focused that is focused on the specimen by the condenser lenses here so we are having a magnetic lenses which acts as a condenser lenses are used to focus the beam are used to focus the beam so the focused beam what we are having the uh, the column which containing the lenses and the specimen must be under high vacuum it is under high vacuum to obtain a clear image uh, because uh, electrons are deflected by collision electrons are being deflected so uh the clear images uh, uh we are going to get because of uh, which are electrons are deflected by collision with air molecules so the vacuum should be, that is the it should be an uh, uh, that is the column what we are having this transmission electron microscope which should have uh, under high vacuum so it should be maintained high vacuum so that uh, the electron should not collide with the air molecules here so because of that we have to maintain the vacuum here uh, for this one so magnetic lenses uh, which uh, Uh, magnetic lenses from the enlarged visible image of the specimen on a fluorescent screen we are going to get because of this magnetic lenses as well as condenser lenses the enlarged visible images of the specimen on a fluorescent fluorescent screen we are going to get that is imaging plate is nothing but the fluorescent screen here so after the passing of this electron from the uh, electron gun which passes through all the specimen we are going to see the uh, visible image that is a visible image which is on the fluorescent fluorescent screen here so the photographic film we are going to use for this one so the screen can also be moved aside and the image captured on photographic film as an permanent record here so imaging plate or else the photographic uh, films uh, can be formed on this imaging plate and these images can be uh, maintained or the data can be analyzed in the by using the uh, computer devices here so the high electron beams uh, which are being bum, uh, which are a bombardment which takes place so lenses focus it on the specimen so lenses whatever the lenses we are having it focus towards the specimen so that the electrons are used for uh, image construction uh, image is constructed by using the transmitted electrons whatever the images uh, we are going to get that is by using the transmitted electrons here so uh, the uh, thicker regions uh, will not uh, uh, have uh, will not passes towards the thicker section so i have already told this one that is nothing but uh, the 
thick sections uh, wherever we are having the thick sections or wherever the atoms which are having bigger atoms as well as uh, the atoms which is having more energy so when we are having a bigger atoms energy will be more at the time so at that time the electron beam will not passes through uh, these atoms so it deflects the electron will deflect at that places so at that places we will not get the exact analysis here so because of that the thin section is made the atom should be of smaller in size and the energy of the atom should be less so that the electron passes through words uh, through the sample and we get the images on the photographic film here so because of that we have to maintain the ultra thin section of the sample for the transmission electron microscope here so this is the working principle of the transmission electron microscope uh, we are having the advantages over this one so uh, which offers more uh, powerful magnification when we compare with the optical microscope or scanning electron microscope because of its uh, high resolution and high magnification so which provide information of an element and compound uh, uh, the uh, materials also uh, images will be have high quality so when we talk about the quality the quality of the images will be high as well as the detailed images we are going to get so this provide the time which provides the information about the morphological as well as the crystallinity so crystalline or it is amorphous those can be find out as well as the particle size distribution so when we talk about the nano size materials the particle dis uh, particle size distribution and, and the elemental composition so we want the composition at the time we can find the elemental composition of the samples so the disadvantage of this machine is only the expensive it is having expense uh, the uh, uh, device what it is having and it is been operated by the skilled workers so skilled uh, researchers or uh, skilled person have to uh, work on this uh, time uh, so if we are not having the skill or the training then we can't uh, operate this one so which is having a large equipment so the space uh, we should require for this and it is having a maintenance so maintenance is high for this uh, time uh, the operation and analysis which requires a special training for this one so uh, the samples are limited to those that are of electron transparent that is nothing but ultra thin specimens are only analyzed in the transmission electron microscope so which is having less than 50 nanometer uh, thickness then only we can go for the LLSS otherwise when we are having 100 nanometer of the sample or uh, when we are having a thick section of the samples then we cannot analyze by using this transmission electron microscope that is nothing but when we want to have a time analysis we have to maintain the dimension of that one as well as the thickness of the standard then only we can go for the transmission electron microscope which is a disadvantage of this analysis so which uh, requires the same uh, that is uh, uh, the maintenance how to be ma maintenance how to be done for the transmission electron microscope so this is what we are having the disadvantages when we come to the application side so this is which is used for a life science medical biological uh, material research forensic analysis for all this we can use the transmission electron microscope and as well as which uh, provides the topological study or morphological study compositional and uh, crystallinity so all these can be uh, done by using this when we want to study the crystal structure so crystal structure of the metals can be identified by using this time analysis so uh, the micro analysis uh, micro sized objects can be analyzed by using this uh, transmission electron microscope so when we talk about the molecular mass or molecular structure so molecular or uh, uh, levels can be analyzed by using this time analysis so uh, these uh, these are the application with respect to the transmission electron microscope so uh, we are ha i am having some of the animated videos with respect to this how exactly the transmission electron microscope will work here so we will uh, we'll go through that here The transmission electron microscope is similar. So this is a transmission electron microscope uh, which works uh, 
in this way beam of electrons the beam of electrons which uh, which are been generated by the tungsten filament which passes towards the condenser lenses and electromagnetic lenses uh, and it is a thin sample the blue color what which indicates blue color which is nothing but thin sample the electron beams which are produced uh, will pass us through towards this thin sample uh, towards uh, the electromagnetic lenses we are having electromagnetic lenses uh, so that the beams which have been produced have to uh, meet or which have to uh, go towards the photographic film here so for that reason we are having the uh, you can see here uh, I'll show here. Uh, so now uh, the beam which have to pass through this uh, thin sample and which has to move, move to the beam how to move towards the fluorescent screen here. So here when the electron beam which passes through through the sample, the electron beam has to hit to this uh, fluorescent screen here. So uh, the beam should not uh, have any collision with the air molecule. So we are having a vacuum, which is a high vacuum uh, chamber which is created and the beam how to move towards this. So it should not have any deflection. Uh, so because of that and the, uh, the speed of this beam electrons should be in the same uh, way so because of that we are going to have uh, electromagnetic lenses so electromagnetic lenses which are used because the beam the, the beam should not uh, how uh, should not reduce its uh, speed or wavelength here so because of that we are going to use the electromagnetic lenses and it has to hit towards the uh, fluorescent screen here so that is what we are having uh, in this one uh, then only we get the exact analysis of the sample here so in the same way we are having uh, another one here, transmission electron microscope. So uh, electron beams which uh, transmits through an ultra thin specimen and a nanometer scale. So shadow images is taken here. That is what we are having. So it is an uh, TEM that is a transmission electron microscope it is. So we are having this is the first upper one which is called as an electron source so that is nothing but the tungsten you can see the tungsten here so cathode which is and it is an anode it is a cathode and it is an anode so electrons which are negative charge and anode which is a positive charge so that the electrons will be catched or the electrons will be withheld by this uh, anode that is whatever the electrons which are produced by the which are produced by the cathode should move towards the anode because of that that is the electron beam should not deflect and the electron should pass through this anode so because of that uh, we anode is used here so that the electrons will pass towards the anode and the same electrons will be sent towards the condenser uh, magnetic uh, electromagnetic lenses and then it passes through the sample so we are having the sample holder with uh, that is the copper grid with the carbon square mesh the copper grid with carbon square mesh it is used uh, so that the samples are holded here and the beam will pass passes through the sample I, uh, towards the objective lenses objective lenses and uh, uh, objective lenses uh, towards the photographic uh, plate here or the filling so uh, the objective lenses the projection lenses so whatever the images which pass uh, through the sample which you pass uh, pass towards the fluorescent screen it has to go towards the so you can see here how exactly the electron beams, electron beams which are produced from the cathode which moves towards these uh, electromagnetic lenses which pass towards the sample, which pass towards the sample as well as objective lenses and uh, projection lenses and, he, and it goes towards the fluorescent screen here. When it goes to the fluorescent screen, the electrons will be moved in this fashion. You can see the scanning of this one so electrons which moves towards the fluorescent screen to get the images so you can have a sample like uh, bismuth or sulfide so we see the electron source in a view so fluorescent screen view we are going to see in this way so the electrons which uh, which we are going to see electron source so you can see here which passes through us in this way so when we see at the bottom so it is at the top electron source is nothing but at the top and uh, it is at the bottom fluorescent screen at the bottom 
we see we get the images when it uh, hits the fluorescent screen so you can see the images we see in this way the shadow it is the dark part the dark part the dark part what we are having So what uh, I have told uh, that is uh, when we are having a bigger atoms, when we are having a bigger atoms, uh, uh, we see when we are having a bigger atoms, uh, the electrons will not pass through us that uh, pass through that atom. So at that time we will not get the images. So dark part which is having less electrons, you can see the dark part which is having less electrons. Uh, through passes through the sample so here when we are having a bigger size atoms then we, we can't we can't uh, see the image because the electrons will not not pass through this uh, sample uh, through this atom so it deflects the electrons will deflect so at that places we will not see the image and where we are having the thin section where the atom passes passes through the sample we get the images in this thin uh, thin uh, which we see in this way so that is what the difference we are having dark portion which is nothing but we are we are we, are, we have not got the image and where we are having the light one uh, there the electrons have been passed and we are going to see the images at that places so because of that we have to maintain the ultra thin section when then only we will get the images so that is what we are having uh, with respect to this so we are having uh, another one <coughs> So transmission electron microscope. So you can see in this one. So we are having a. So it is an anode. So it is a specimen. So it is an. Uh, it is a cathode. It is an anode. It is a cathode. The electron beams are being generated from the tungsten filament, and it passes towards the anode towards the specimen. It passes towards the specimen. It passes through the specimen as well as objective lenses and projection lenses and it goes towards the fluorescent screen here so when it goes towards the fluorescent screen we get the images so we are having the objective lens as well as the condenser lens uh, pro projection lens projection lens that is nothing but these objective lens and the projection lens uh, lenses acts as the uh, barrier here that is the electron should move towards the fluorescent screen as well as uh, we are having the uh, the projection lenses that is nothing but whatever the beams which comes here electron beam it has to go towards the fluorescent screen so that is maintained by using the objective lenses as well as the fluorescent uh, uh, sorry objective lenses as well as uh, projection lenses here so uh, when it hits towards the fluorescent screen we get the image in the computer in this way so that is what we are having very thin samples can be analyzed here so this is what we are having so one type of uh, transmission microscope is the scanning transmission microscope so here the electron beam is focused on a specific point so you can see here the first one which is the uh, transmission it is the scanning scanning transmission you are having another type here so how exactly it scans here so the beam when it uh, passes towards the each atom the electrons when it passes towards the each atom uh, of the sample it gives us the image here so so each image that is each point can will be analyzed by using the electrons we get this in this way so this is one of the method or the device which we are having so it is another type when we want uh, at the different locations so when we want to analyze at the different lo location it is another type so spectrum when we are having a prism when we are having a magnetic prism so we get in this way it is another type of the uh, transmission electron microscope what we are having so different parts of the sample will be analyzed in this way this techniques allows for uh, example to realize and visualize but also identify the chemical nature of atoms in ultra thin samples
So this is what we are having with respect to the uh, transmission electron microscope. Uh, it is very, very important microscope what we are having when we want to analyze uh, the, any of the compounds or it may be any of the nanoparticles, uh, when we want to analyze morphology, topology, for all these we use a transmission electron microscope which gives us very, very useful uh, analysis or the results with respect to this. So when we compare with the scanning electron microscope, transmission electron microscope which gives us uh, beautiful images when we compare as well as the results, when we see the results, the results will be of accurately as well as uh, which will have a clarity when we compare with the scanning electron microscope because of this TEM as well as SEM. So when we are using ultra thin specimen, TEM plays a very important role. When we are having a thicker uh, samples when we are having more than 100 nanometer of the sample SEM plays a very important role so SEM and TEM are a very very important microscopic analysis microscopes which we are going to use for the analysis so this is the session what we are having today uh, students so in tomorrow's session we will study about the x-ray diffraction method so what do we mean by x-ray diffraction and how it is difference, different when we compare with the scanning electron microscope or uh, scanning electron microscope and transmission electron microscope. So it is also used for different uh, type of applications. We will uh, go through that one. We will discuss in our next session. Thank you.